Hi, it's Frank from Man Lake, and I'm Sam here with David Westerville. He was with the Department of Ag for many years here in Florida. And we're just going to talk a little bit in general about how bees fit into our agriculture in through not only the state of Florida, but the country. So tell me a little bit about Florida's agriculture in well, general. Well, with Florida agriculture, what if you go back 100, 150 years ago when agriculture was in its main, you know, growth. Uh, Florida's main crops were oranges, cattle, and so we had very few other major crops. Uh, now, with what's going on in Florida, we have about 150 different crops that are grown here. We require pollination for them. And so if we don't have healthy bees here in Florida and throughout the U.S., which Florida supplies about one third of the bees throughout the United States. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. You say they're here in Florida, so how do they fit into the yeah. nationwide? Florida is unique because we end up having very little fall or winter time, which bees really don't go into hibernation, but once the weather starts to get down in the 40s or 50s, they stay in their beehive. So if they're in their beehive, they're consuming the honey that they brought before into there for, as I like to say, for their sister's offspring or their mother's offspring, that they'll never consume that honey normally. The bees that bring that honey in or that nectar in, it's Florida being unique that we have a fall honey flow, it's Brazilian pepper and Malaluca, and most other states don't have any fall so we don't have to feed during the fall and winter time so we can do that in august september october and so our bees are still strong building where throughout the u.s they're starting to dwindle down get ready for winter time our bees are good and strong so our bees get ready and beekeepers work them throughout november december january january they start shipping them to pollination What's out that? in california for almonds, almonds. So, yeah. how many colonies, commercial uh, pollination colonies, do you think there are? In Florida, roughly, there's about 600,000 colonies that are maintained by commercial beekeepers. That's about 1,000 commercial beekeepers that manage to take their bees out to California. So, the majority of these guys are building those bees through that fall, fall early winter period yes. that you're talking about. And when do they ship them to California? They'll start shipping them as early as late December, just before Christmas time. And then they ship throughout January and the first week of February. Normally the first week of February, somewhere between the 4th and the 15th, they will start setting. Uh, that's when they move those bees from holding yards. They may have 20,000 colonies in a holding yard. And all in two to three days, they move them into the almond groves. It's like a hive of bees. I mean, if you're sitting there at an intersection, you'll probably see four or five truckloads of bees, one-ton loads, which averages about 128 colonies on a one-ton going out into the almonds. And they have to be placed so, you know, at a certain distance through that almond grove or orchard, whichever they want to call it. Uh, so those bees are placed and they're maybe for two weeks. And then they're well, picked up. Before rather. you go there, so... We know that the almonds take what one uh, two point one million almonds yeah, or so roughly, around there. Yeah. So Florida is supplying almost a third of the bees that are doing that almond. Correct. Florida supplies roughly uh, a third. Now we say Florida supplies. You got to realize that about thirty-five different states ship bees into Florida. Different beekeepers from different states, and then they ship those bees to California for maybe a three-week period for pollination there. They make a fairly good, you know, pollination contract. They get some nice money. And then, then from there, they'll go either into Oregon, Washington, or even travel back across the United States over to the East Coast to do Maine, blueberries, cranberries, apples. New York apples. Pennsylvania yep, Pennsylvania apples. New Jersey apples. blueberries. Yep. So they're going to spend those couple of weeks out there in California. The petals start to drop. They load them right. up and they go. Yeah. So, and you said that the bees don't necessarily, they're not all here in Florida, but they come into Florida. Correct. So, when we say, oh, they're in Florida, they could have come from anywhere because uh, these, they have to be moved around. They come here to right. build. 
Yeah, they come in here to build. Florida requires that those bees, if they're not already registered in the state of Florida, they have to be inspected from the state they're coming to. Uh, we have an inspection program, and that inspection program for the state of Florida, uh, it's pretty important. You know, it's run by the Florida Department of Agriculture, and our apiary inspectors here in Florida are, I'm going to say they're the best out of the United States. Uh, they're very knowledgeable of the bee industry and also plants and the diversity in agriculture. So when you think about those 35 other states or maybe 37 different states that ship bees in, those bees have to be, you know, managed bees under commercial, and they may be put on a semi with 670 other hives that are brought into here. So we need those pieces of land that we can place those bees to. That's why it's important to have a healthy environment here in Florida. Right, right. What, what would you say as far as um, not only people with dollar value on it, as far as pollination, what do bees do for us? In Florida, it's unique because we have roughly about 130, 135 different crops that are here that uh, about probably 35% of those require pollination. And when you think of citrus, it used to be our largest, one of the largest industries we have here. Really only about 10% of citrus require pollination. Those are your specialty fruits like your tangerines, burkots. Uh They don't require pollination for your round juice fruit or your grapefruit and everything. But we love that honey they produce off of citrus or what we call orange blossom honey. And uh, okay, it, fantastic, honey. fantastic honey. It's getting more rare and rare every year because of the loss of citrus, because of citrus greening. Right. And uh, yeah, we've lost a lot of habitat in Florida also because of the increase in houses here. Uh, you know. uh, now, with that going on, we have, since 2012, we've got backyard beekeeping protected in Florida because of the right to have bees in your backyard. It's, uh, as some people like to call it, it protects the hobbyist. We call them backyard beekeepers because they're very important also because those bees in backyards are pollinating the backyard gardens or the freedom gardens. Right? Why, why don't we just provide them? Why do we need honeybees? Well, well, honeybees are very unique, again, because they're generalists. They will pollinate almost anything that has that pollen there. They gather the pollen that's feeding the young larva in the bee out. The bees themselves don't normally consume very much pollen, but the larvae from their little sisters that are growing in there in the bee hive have to consume equal in, equal amounts of pollen, meaning that if one cell of brood is produced or baby bees, it takes one cell of pollen. So that's a lot of protein. It would be like us going out every day and buying a, uh, 10 pounds of ground beef right. in order to feed your 10 pound baby. Yeah. And uh, it's the same thing with honeybees because they're generalists, they will pollinate everything from apples to zucchinis. So, and anything in between there. So with your uh, native pollinators, they're specialists in like alfalfa, or they're specialists that are just strictly for cucurbits, which are your squash and those variety of plants. So Florida has, we have Eastern blueberry bees, we have squash bees or cucurbits, uh, we have everything you can think of, but we've got such a variety of now row crops that we need honeybees for pollination. So with the big monocultures out there, right. the native bees couldn't do it anyway. That's correct. Or because we have hybridized plants so that they require honeybee pollination instead of what would have normally pollinated it. That's big. Yeah. So obviously honeybees play a very important part right. in our agriculture, in our daily lives. And a lot of people, I, I don't think, really realize that. You yeah, know, the, they, they think honey first, pollination right. second, but really, if you think about it, it's kind It's of totally the opposite. The opposite. Yeah. Uh, one of the projects I worked on about 12 years ago was trying to figure out the value of a honeybee and the value uh, of just what you said. What is the value of honey as opposed to pollination? Uh, if honey's selling for a dollar a pound, 
pollination is worth two hundred dollars. It's roughly two hundred times the value. Uh, we the, can live without honey. Yeah, we can we live without. Live it would be hard to live. We definitely, I'd be a lot healthier because I'd lose probably a hundred pounds. But uh, what I will say is, we did figure out uh, going back to about two thousand and twelve, the value of a honeybee just in almonds for pollination is worth about a nickel. So each bee. So if you think of a hive of bees, there's about 2,000 of them every day that are going out for pollination. So in, they last about two weeks in that pollination time. So they're being replenished at about 800 to 2,000 a day. So that's a lot of nickels going out that hive every that hive morning. That hive yeah. by uh, 2, two million, million 2.1 million. Yeah. That's a lot of nickels. Dollars, and you're talking a lot yeah. of you coming into our. Yeah, uh, there are requirements for the almond or almond growers. I'll get them said yeah. right. Uh, the almond growers have to have uh, to meet their insurance needs. It was at two hives per acre. They've reduced that down a little bit more, but they've got to have that number of bees on that grove to pollinate. And you know it, it's. Same with uh, cranberries, blueberries. They have to have that value of the bees there. Yeah. So it's very so important. You're involved in crop yeah. insurance. Yep. So yes. that plays a big part. Do I have Huge. the right number of pollinators right. in my orchard? Yeah. Or in my, to, to and, and because of environmental impacts right now, uh, it may require more number of bees into an area. There, there's been studies that go back in the 40s and 50s for the numbers of bees to put enough pressure in there to get everything pollinated. We know now that even uh, that may be higher where you're looking at something, uh, let's say for blueberries here in Florida, which blueberries uh, 10 years ago, you go out here, there were less than about a thousand acres of blueberries. Now you're talking about 13, 14,000 acres of blueberries in Florida. Now we're needing more bees for pollination. So you've got to get those bees from somewhere. So commercial beekeepers are having to virtually every year replace all of their hives of bees right. with new bees. With the all the pesticides, yep. pesticides, and yeah. mites, viruses. It's a struggle for beekeepers to keep their yeah. numbers up. Yes. And with the growing crops, they need more hives. So it's, and, uh, it's one of those the, things that people don't understand yeah. that how big it is. Yeah. And, and the pressure that and how pressure. hard it is to get somebody to as a a worker right. a laborer you know you can go into i'm going to pick on the construction industry you can pretty much have anybody come off the street walk off the street and take a job and they can use a hammer and can hit a nail you go into the bee industry you take that guy off the street and normally they're running the other way after about hey, two man. minutes in the bee yard it's a very but specialized specialized yeah you've got it you've yep. got to want it you got to want to do it because it's heavy work it's yeah. hot, hot work. work and you get stung again yeah. yeah how many people want to go to work in a stinging insects environment uh, it does make for uh exciting jobs sometimes and Sometimes I look back and say, what was I thinking when I got into it? But uh, bees have been in my life for 55 years plus, and uh, I've enjoyed it. And I, actually, my son was third generation beekeeper. He's now since retired, and uh, he's enjoying life. So That's you can't make a good living from yeah. bees. It's a hard job, like you just said, Frank. Like other jobs, yeah. you can do it right. Yeah. You can do it, you can do it. Yeah. excellent. So, yeah. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Frank. Yep.